Hello and welcome to the Kyle Olson Show. More developments in the boat scandal involving Governor Gretchen Whitmer and her husband Mark Mallory. So over the weekend, there was the story from Memorial Day that Mark Mallory, who is the first gentleman, I guess that's what he's called, in the state of Michigan, he wanted to go up to his cottage in Antrim County, which is in the northern part of the Lower Peninsula, um, and he said that he wanted to get his boat in the water. But, of course, the issue that he was running into was the dock company that services his boat was not able to help him. Because of his wife's shutdown order, he was unable to get his boat in the water. And the company that he called was not able to work. One of the problems that this company has faced over the last several weeks is that this is their prime time to be getting docks and boats in the water for people in northern Michigan. And they weren't able to do that. So Mark Mallory decided to call this dock company and said, I'd like to get my dock in the water. I'd like to get my boat in the water. And they said, we can't help you. And he said, I'm paraphrasing, don't you know who I am? I'm the first gentleman of the state of Michigan. Apparently, that moved him further down the line. That was not an asset. And I think one of the problems, one of the things that a lot of the people running Michigan right now is they don't understand, they don't feel the pain of small business owners who are trying to eke out a living. They don't understand the shutdown orders and the impact that they're having on everyday people. As I've said before, Gretchen Whitmer, her paycheck is still flowing. Dana Nessel, her paycheck is still flowing. They don't have to worry about putting food on the table where small business owners contractors, parents, that's something that they live with on a daily basis. And compound that situation with the fact that the unemployment agency is completely failing and is not able to keep up with the demand. And so the first gentleman of the state of Michigan attempts to pull some strings to get his boat in the water so he and his wife and their family can go up to northern Michigan and enjoy the Memorial Day weekend. So the governor was forced to address this during a press conference this week, and this is what she said. My husband made a failed attempt at humor last week when checking in with the small business that helps with the, our boat and dock up north. Knowing it wouldn't make a difference, he jokingly asked if, marrying, if being married to me might move him up in the queue. Obviously, with the motorized boating prohibition in our early days of COVID-19, he thought it might get a laugh. It didn't. And to be honest, I wasn't laughing either when it was relayed to me because I knew how it would be perceived. He regrets it. I wish it wouldn't have happened. And that's really all we have to say about it. So aside from the fact that she blames her husband's failed attempt at humor, that's what she called it, when I don't, maybe it was a failed attempt at humor, but why are you trying to make that attempt to begin with. And to me, I think this sort of opens up a broader question of how serious really is Gretchen Whitmer at attempting to be the vice presidential nominee for Joe Biden? Because you would think someone in Gretchen Whitmer's position who wants to be the vice president of the United States of America, because apparently she thinks she's done such a great job as the governor of the state of Michigan, you would think she would be minding her P's and Q's. And she would be doing everything she could to do things by the book, to play it straight, and to not push the rules, bend the rules, or break the rules. But that appears to not be what happened. So after the statement that she made during the press conference, which I think was sort of, you know, attempting to get some of these reporters who are friendly to her anyway to not ask anything because, well, you know, she just spoke about it. There was a follow-up question to clarify because there were these rumors on Facebook and Twitter and, and social media that she and her husband were going up to Antrim County for the weekend, even though she had told people that they should think long and hard about going to Traverse City for the weekend and potentially infecting all of those people. Which, to divert from that for a second, what I find puzzling about the governor's whole strategy in this whole reopen situation is that you would think you would attempt to relieve the pressure of wanting to go to a bar or a restaurant or some public setting that is some semblance of normal life, which is now reopened in northern Michigan. You would think that the governor would attempt to uh, relieve some of that pressure and the 
urgency or the interest in driving up north to do that, you would think that she would create the same rules for the rest of the state or at least other parts of the state to try and relieve some of that pressure. But that's not what she did. And so in her finger wagging, she said that people should think long and hard about going to Traverse City. Then this is what happened. Governor, I know you did just address some of the uh, rumors that were surfacing the internet. Um, when you open regions six and eight, you advise people not to rush up there and overwhelm the area. Um, just moments ago, you mentioned that your family's been staying home for the past several weeks, but there were some reports that you did spend time up north. Are those reports true? So a as you know, uh, a few weeks ago, we dropped the travel ban so that if people had a second residence, it was permitted to go to a second residence. My husband did go up to our place in Antrim County and raked some leaves and came home. Um, so he was there. He did not, we did not all pile in the car to go enjoy our second home, although that would have been permitted um, if we had. But the fact of the matter is he was there briefly for a night, I think one or two nights and came right back home after he raked our leaves. Did you catch that? She told the reporter that her husband drove to Antrim County 400 miles, six hours round trip to rake leaves. And he was gone one night, I think, maybe one or two, I don't know. Is any of this believable? To me, the answer is no. But then the next troubling aspect of this was that no one in the media, no one asked a follow-up question about the governor's confusion and uncertainty about this whole situation. This whole thing, trying to get your boat in the water in and of itself is not a big deal. Everybody, I think, is trying to do that, and I can understand the desire to try and get your boat in the water just before Memorial Day weekend. I get it. But I think the issue here is there's a pattern. There's a pattern of lies. There's a pattern of scandal, frankly, surrounding this governor, her actions, and her reactions. And so this is one of many issues that I believe the legislature needs to look into. So on Wednesday, Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky took to the Senate floor, and this is what he said about the whole situation. The governor lied. Not only did she lie, but she directed her staff to lie on her behalf in order to cover up her own lies. Yesterday, the governor went in front of cameras and admitted to the lie. She referenced the exchange as a failed joke. It would be nice if this governor was as quick to identify failed leadership. How can we trust the governor? How can the citizens of Michigan trust the governor? What else is she willing to lie about if she lied about putting a boat into water. So that's pretty direct. Tiffany Brown, who is Whitmer's spokeswoman, spokesperson, spokeshuman, came out and said Shirky's statement was, quote, incorrect and said that he owed Whitmer an apology. So you have all of this confusion, uh, sort of sleight of hand, lecturing from the governor, and she's the victim in all of this. This is what's going on in the state of Michigan right now. I feel like I'm saying this until I'm blue in the face, but Senator Shirky, House Speaker Lee Chatfield, where are the investigations? Where are the hearings? Where's the hearing on the contact tracing contract that was doled out to the Democratic firm? Where's the hearing on the Michigan State Police and their affirmative action scheme because the director there deemed the force was way too white and way too male. Where's the hearing on that? Where's the hearing on Cherry Health and uh, their staffer being fired because she opposed a Joe Biden rally that Gretchen Whitmer also attended? Where's the hearing on that? Where's the hearing on the dam break and who is responsible for that? And lastly, where is the hearing on the abuse of power with the governor trying to get her boat in the water? Michigan taxpayers deserve answers. I'm not going to stop talking about it until we get them. When we come back, Tony Daunt, executive director of the Michigan Freedom Fund. This is the Kyle Olson Show. We'll be right back.